Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, I just want to do a quick video on something here. So, I've had a lot of people make comments about this amp, it's illegal, da da da, -da whatever. Uh, first off, the only reasons why, yeah, reasons why I'm making this is, one, I have 98% of the parts already. Over the years, I've accumulated parts, um, big lots, and then I sell a couple, get all my money back. So I'm just sitting on a lot of parts. So that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, I fix a lot of amps. And, you know, I have, I have other hobbies too, off-roading, fixing cars, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, this is just something else. It, you know, it, it's a challenge. You know, it's different than what I do every day. I'm putting something together, I'm designing something, and uh, I really test my my abilities with something like this. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that make comments or whatever, and, you know, then they don't produce pictures of something they made. You know, it's like, please don't make negative comments. You know, this is... Uh, this is something I'm doing for the fun of it, and to be honest with you, I'm going to get it to work, and it'll probably go in the corner. I probably won't even use it, and, you know, if I were to go buy a new AL-1500 for seven grand or so, I mean, I, like I said, I already have the parts, and an AL-1500 is capable of legal limit plus, you know, it's within the operator's response, you know, it's up to them, it's their responsibility to run it within legal limit. So this does a little bit more, you know, this would do four times what one, one of those would do, a little bit more than four times. But you can't take an outfit, you can't take those amps and, you know, do uh, FT8 uh, for long periods of time or, you know, if you contest with it. I mean, failures, I mean, what's it? You know, tube like that, new, it's like for two grand, you know, so tube in this thing, I already had two of them, and, you know, it's less, less than half the price of one of those tubes. Way more robust grid, and I already have them, <laughs> you know. So, this thing, I, uh, if I wanted to, I can contest with it, I can do Morse code, whatever, I, AM on 75 meters, it's a simple triode. You know, there's big, and then this really isn't huge. You know, I know people that have stuff way bigger than this. I have something way bigger, and I'm going to show you that, you know. And um, when I'm done with this, I'm going to make videos on that. Right now, uh, it's a multi-band, but I, I would change the coil. I'm going to put a rotary switch in, just like this one. And then I'm going to get rid of it, because the other amp is just crazy big. It's stupid, but, you know, I... Had acquired that, and another guy helped me with a little bit of it. You know, the you know when I was 19, so I started that. When I started that thing when I was uh, 19 years old. I was uh, 22 years ago, 23 years ago. So, so much was wrong. I had so much wrong in it, or you know, he just you know, he did the best he could, and you know, over the years I, I learned, made it right, and but again, for the fun of it. Um, but it's just way too big. So, you know, there's big and then there's just way too big. And, you know, the, if you're going to throttle it back, you're just wasting a ton of electricity and a ton. Like the other things, it wastes a ton of electricity. And the efficiency at best is around 65 to begin with. And if you're going to run it throttled back to uh, less, you know, like an eighth of what it's capable of doing, the efficiency is going to go just go straight down the toilet. So, you know, I've seen a lot of people make monoband amps, and, you know, this is the real test, multi-band. So, I wanted to show that I could do it, and um, I know there were a couple other guys, one passed away, and there was another guy that used roller inductors, which were undersized, you know, an amp with a 366,000 or 10,000 with a 20 amp inductor, trying to use that thing on a high-duty cycle or on the higher bands, it's going to fail. There's no question about it. It's just easier, a lot easier to put a roller in than tapped than, than a fixed uh, tapped coil. So, you know, at some point, you know, if someone, I know there's some guys in the Middle East, there are guys 
in other countries that I guess the limit is different over there, you know, the legal limit or whatever. So um, they purchased some amps from a couple of these people here in the United States. And like I said, one passed away and the other one's not doing it anymore. But uh, this one is true, true continuous duty cycle. I'm going to show that. So if I do make another one of these, maybe one a year, one every couple of years, just for the fun of it, I'll have a cabinet made. Um, I used a cabinet from New Jersey last time. The material is thinner and it just wouldn't be big enough. The, the internal space, I'll lay it out different. Uh, it just, I'll do it different next time. Be a brand new cabinet. I'll have some made. I have a machine shop. I'll make, I'll design a cabinet and have them punch all the holes and everything. I'll give them the specs for the capacitor mounting whole location and you know, just a lot of time. It requires a lot of time to drill the holes, line everything up, yada, yada, yada. So if I can eliminate all that, it'd be a lot faster. And uh, do some things a little bit different. You know, I'm using what I have. I'd use the same back and variable cap, same rotary switch for the output network, uh, input circuit. I'd use probably a four pi, I mean, I'm sorry, four section air variable capacitor on each side and have more total capacitance range and maybe add 10 meters. The reason why I'm only doing 160 through 15 is because I don't have another tap on this. And I don't really care about 10. I have another amp that'll do 10. Uh, just no interest. I know it's harder to get an amp down on 160. There's more noise down there. Uh, a lot of people don't build them for down there. Uh, so I want to do it. You know, I want to need more inductance, more capacitance. There's, a lot, there's more to it. The plate choke, you know, if I bring it up on 10 also, I might have to do something different with the plate choke. So, like I said, I've seen a lot of guys make monoband amps and all sorts of things are not right. Um, so please, if you're going to make comments, just keep them to yourself. Unless you can, you know, there are a lot of smart people out there, people that are way smart, way, way smarter than me. I know some engineers that are just really smart and I'm humble. I just like doing this, you know. So, uh, if you have stuff you'd like to share or some other stuff you'd like to add, but... You know, feel free, you know, but this, uh, this is just a fun project, and, um, I'm including my buddy Jim in Canada on it, and, you know, I'm the one down here, he's up there, he's far, so, the layout, all that stuff, you know, we bounce ideas off each other, and, uh, it's just fun, it's fun to have people to talk to that are positive and you know, um, have, have a lot of experience and just, you know, don't have to worry about, oh, that's illegal, da, 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 whatever. You, know, you could buy an Alpha 77 SX. It does 3,500. You could buy, but, you you know, you're, you can't do 100% duty cycling. You could, or a really high, not even just 100% duty. I'm talking about, like, FD8 something, or it's super high duty cycle. Um you'd never be in a situation where you're doing a 100% duty cycle unless uh, there was a world war or something. You know, I want to remind people, you know, when 9-11 happened, they relied on us ham radio operators to, to uh, you know, carry phone calls. You know, or when Pearl Harbor happened, or I mean, all these, you know, or even during Vietnam. So in a situation like that, this would really come in handy, a really high duty cycle amp. I've had customers send amps in where they're, they have, uh, they're, they're part of the Mars or whatever, you know, like um, emergency services, and they just fry their amps. They say they have one, and they'll use it for a while and go to the other, back and forth. So, you know, if you're going to make an amp with this size tube or any tube, in my mind, everything should be able to support the tube, the full output, and there really should be no time limit on how much you can talk on it, like for the length of time. Power supply, band switch, everything it just gets more costly. You know, like the, the parts involved, you know, when you're buying a commercial amp, you know, there, there's not much money in making one of those things. So they, you know, it's like a, they, it's like a balance, you know, to make it worth it and still make it reliable and stay within the, their specs, you know, so, so that's this. So, um, Waiting on a payment for 922. I have another one boxed up. Payment just arrived. We had a nice storm here today, so I'm not. I didn't go out the road. I'm waiting on a 
payment for this AL80B. Waiting on a payment for that AL811H. Yep, I need to clean my bench. That's next. So, so here's the, uh, let's make sure I don't have any customer's personal info. Um, here's actually, I'm going to try to use this panel. I have other ones that are cleaner. I could have one made if I have to, but then get all metering. I mean, last I made another amp that had more meters than this. Had RAM meter, make the meters or Magitech meters. They scaled them. They put the backing plates in. I have extra meters, so I have, I think three of these panels with an extra set of meters. So, but a panel cost me over a thousand bucks, and it was like with the meters and the metal, cutting the metal and all that. The CNC, uh, my CNC guy did it. Um, the shop I use actually makes the roller wheels for the aircraft carriers. It's really cool. They're precise. They just, they're awesome there. I've been using them for a long time. My friend Jeff over there, he's a cool dude. But, um, so anyway, if I have to, I will, but I'm going to try to use this. This hole lines perfectly up with the band switch. And then I will most likely, you know, put the um, one turns counter here for the plate. I probably have to mount the other one over here, maybe I'd have to maybe cover up that over here or wherever it lines up. But rearrange some stuff, make it if it doesn't look really nice, I won't do it, you know. And then the input circuit, you know, be over here. So I'm gonna have chain set up. It you'll see it when I get to that point. It's it's not gonna be a simple thing. So. So I'll show you the other amp I was talking about. Okay. So now this is stupid big. Like I said, change the output coil has variable input um, voltage on the screen grid and the control grid. Just the way it was set up. I had a 4x10 in it at first and upgraded to a 4x15. I have panels for the sides, the doors, all that stuff in the garage. Plate supply is external. And, um, you know, runs 1,500 volts. It's a stabilized screen supply. Rock solid. Peter Dahl transformer. Made for me. Uh, the original Pete. Same with the control grid transformer. Has all the proper interlocks. Uh, screen grid overload. Um, plate uh, current overload. Um, control grid interlock. If you lose that. Uh, shuts off. Uh, has three high pressure blowers in it. I had three. Um, you know, you need a lot of cooling. You know, again, this is 100% duty cycle. The tubes rated and of dissipation. Um, you know, and there's a thermal switch I put in for the uh, intake temps off the uh, ambient temp near the amp where to too high, and it would uh, shut down. Uh, relays are all sequenced properly as a photohelic gauge, so if I lost the blower, it would shut down. Just a lot of safety features. All Teflon wiring. By the way, this is stupid big. Yes, there is no reason to run this on ham. I will say that. And again, fun project. And you'll get to see more of it, like the input stuff and all that. For some reason, it seemed like all that was like a big mystery, big secret. A lot of people didn't want to share any of that stuff. But when I put the rotary switch in, I will um, show all of that. It's just it's going to be a while. I just have so much stuff to do. Um, or I might just change the coil setup so it's easier to swap it out. I'm very limited. Oh, there's my roll of tape. Let's look over that. Uh, <laughs> so it says doors that swing open in the back. That's a DC regulated supply for the filament. So filament supply does the filament um, voltage does not move at all. I know they say the emission life will suffer when you run DC on the filament, and I think in the big um, television transmitters they would switch the polarity now and then to maximize the voltage. I mean on the uh, cat the uh, the emission life of the tube. And I can also, uh, you know, it's knocked down, you know, per care and feeding of power grid tubes for filament uh, management. Uh, it 
to maximize the emission life. I mean, this tube's been here for over 20 years. I mean, that's not a problem. A lot of people, they, another band, you know, the other band, you know, the band, uh, you know, like, whatever, I don't get any of They, uh, I've heard stories, you know, there's a shortage of tubes, you know, triodes, tetrodes, now even. They'll ground the grids, both grids on the tetrode, and drive the uh, cathode, you know, and, um, the thing that I realize is now you're limited to the one of two weaker grids, which is the control grid. So if they try to push it, it ends up requiring more drive too. They end up pushing it, they burn that grid up, you know, and boom, tube shot. And that's why Conco's struggling to find cores. I don't know how much longer they'll be in business. Uh, Matt, when he was there, dealt with him a lot. He said he figured a couple of years. That was about two years ago. So nice people there, but uh, so. Yeah, it's kind of funny. The original guy that helped me with this, they did not have a, what did it have? Like a, I think it has a 15 ohm resistor uh, between the B negative and ground, and that blew open, and the B negative came up to the same potential as B positive. The metering circuit's not set up like a conventional amp like the other ones I did, so. Uh, this was the the weakest uh, breakdown point and <laughs> high voltage was arcing over here anyway that's been resolved as uh, diodes between the B negative and chassis and uh, proper resistors so anyway sad to see this thing go but I've had people beg me to sell this for um, a non hand band I just will not do it so Eventually, this will probably go out of the country, and if I don't sell it, I don't care. <laughs> It'll just, like I said, sit. I'm going to end up putting it, once it's all set, I'll put it, I'll squeeze it in the other room, and I'll put it in the corner and put a sheet over it. I do not need the money. Um, but I am trying to get rid of some stuff to gain space. So, that's about it. Battery's about to die on my camera. Thank you for watching, and... Stay tuned for more videos, more amps on the way, and uh, lots more to fix out there in the world. So, thanks for watching, and have a great night, because it's nighttime. <laughs> 73.